Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. 
Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Since 1947, the United States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. And a good morning to you, one and all, all of you lovely liberty lovers all across the globe, as well as you beautiful Ecclesiastites. It is I, your leader, Elrod, coming to you live from the Bunkerized Studios, somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still live free or die. It is not big government or bust. Here it is on Tuesday, November the 22nd, in the year of our Lord, 2016. Call-in number is the same, 603-835-3226. Thank you for being here. Got a lot to cover this morning, so let's dive right into it, shall we? Oh, by the way, we have a shortened week this week uh, because of the Thanksgiving holiday, Thursday and Friday. We will have, uh, we will do... Freedom Friday tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So Freedom Friday tomorrow, and all of y'all, you'll get the chance to listen to a best of show on Thursday and Friday, but um, spend time with your fam, your familia. Uh, get to, get to, know, I, this year is going to be contentious for, uh, evidently for a lot of families. I mean, some families are really split over the Hillary Donald thing. I mean, they, they, they really are, I guess. I don't, I wouldn't, it's, uh, it's a little bit disconcerting to see families break up or have fights, especially at a, on a, at a holiday event over something like this. And look, if, let me give you a little advice. First of all, if you've got a split political family, in many families across this country, they, they'll they'll find themselves in this situation because you know, as no no one size fits all for a country, nor does it fit for a family. Don't talk about politics. Now, if they want to go there, and if you have lefties in your family and they want to go there. Of course, it, 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 you know, you might be biting your tongue not to say anything in response, but don't be snarky about it. Don't be snarky. Just say, well, maybe this would be, uh, there, there'd be a better time for this sort of discussion. Not at the Thanksgiving table. And if they still persist, because some of them just will, then just politely, calmly, Point out the facts. I mean, yeah, tell him, you know what, Donald, you're right. Donald Trump is not the perfect candidate. 
There, you know, he has so many flaws, just like all of us humans do. But he's got a lot of flaws. You're absolutely right. Agree with him. But, you can continue, however, never say but. Don't say but. Always say however. Trust me, you know, psychologists and wordsmiths have been going over this for, for years and years and years and years. Don't say but, because but indicates that you really didn't mean what you just said. However, indicates that you're about to present even more information or further the topic without disregarding what you just said. But, the word but, B-U-T, basically says you're disregarding what you just said. And that's the way people pick it up, believe it or not. So use the word however, not to mention you'll sound a lot more erudite for your liberal family members. However, Hillary also was far from perfect. She had her own issues, some of them similar to Donald, some of them all her own. So neither candidate was perfect. However, what we wanted to do was at least try to have some sort of semblance of reasonable-sized, reasonable, actionable government. Now, it may sound like a bunch of gobbledygook to you, but understand who you're talking to. If you say you wanted reasonable, actionable government, that means absolutely jack. It means nothing. But you know what it means to them? Because they're so erudite and educated themselves, they'll, they'll stop and think, yeah, I guess I can see your point. They will. I mean, they'll still try to argue with you, but th- at least it won't be, you know, voices won't be going off the, uh, off the scale. Because they're not going to want to seem like an idiot for not understanding the gobbledygook you just spewed. I am being totally serious. Try it. You're going to be surprised. And then you can just diffuse the whole situation and and then change the subject and say, this turkey is one of the best turkeys we've ever had. Or whatever you're eating. If it's tofurkey, then say tofurkey. Whatever. Is it tof? Yeah, it's tofurkey, right? You say tofurkey? I say garbage. Give me the real bird. Uh, for the, <laughs> I like turkey. Turkey's good. You know what I like better? Goose. Yeah, I'm not having goose this year, but um, goose is expensive. You know, um, what, well, I guess if the UK gets their, those, those people out in the UK get their way, goose would be even more expensive. Um, you know, food tax. But goose at, at this time of year and around, uh, well, goose at this time of year is really expensive. You know, turkeys just drop in price, like ridiculous. Turkeys, this is, uh, I know people who, who have, you know, freezers, you know, other than, than their refrigerator freezer uh, combo. They have a separate freezer. And I know people who will go out and buy two or three turkeys plus the thanksgiving turkey because they have room to freeze you know store it in freezer and uh then um they will go ahead and i've done this once bought a turkey and taken the leftovers and made turkey pot pies i actually like turkey pot pies they're good taste almost like chicken and they'll they'll do this throughout the year they'll cook a turkey you know once every few months And when you do it that way, it's actually really, really cheap. So if you have a large family, you know, buying a turkey and having a turkey once every couple of months, it will do your food budget some wonders. Um, Just an idea. But now is it now is the time to get those turkeys because they're the cheapest at this point in time. But but goose, on the other hand, goose around this time through Christmas, uh, the prices go up on goose. And I was looking at goose the other day, and it was like $60 for the bird. Like, you've got to be out of your mind. 
But that's the prices they go for now. And just just to say, during Easter, lamb goes through the roof. You know, if you try to buy a, a lamb roast or rack of lamb or something like that, lamb is a lot, or leg, leg of lamb especially, is uh, extremely expensive around Easter time. I don't look. I understand how turkey got to be a part of the Thanksgiving table because that's one of the prolific protein sources that they had at the Thanksgiving table because they could just go and hunt it. Turkeys were very prevalent uh, back then, and to some point here in New England, especially, and, and to some point they still are. I mean, we get turkeys around my neighborhood quite often. Wild turkeys. Huge birds, by the way. They're huge. But when it comes to Christmas, I, well, you could say the goose thing came about because of Charles Dickens. Um, there really isn't any meat that surrounds, because turkeys are not really European at all. They're not in, in Asia, and they're not in um, you know uh, Africa or the Middle East. So it's not as if turkeys or... Goose would have co- would have been a part of the first Christmas celebrations in those areas because they just weren't a part of that indigenous species. Um, you'd have to pick something else. It probably had fish. A lot of fish. Uh, going back to those early Christmas days for Christmas supper, would have had a lot of uh, you know. Various types of cattle could have been lamb, um, oxen, uh, types of cow. Could have had all that wonderful stuff. And uh, by the way, it doesn't seem like man from long ago, from eating all that meat, had issues with cardiovascular disease. Just saying. They didn't seem to have heart attacks. Although, you know, it, those average people obviously didn't live very long. Um, they burned themselves out with work. So, you know what? You lazy liber- uh, liberal millennials, think about this. You know, your great-great-grandparents probably died in their 40s. Because they work so hard, they burn their bodies out, literally. I mean, think about it. I mean, the, the average, well, and it is said that in the Roman days, um, you know, average lifespan was around 30 years old. Now, I don't know how a civilization lasts if you can only live to be 30, um, but for various reasons. You know, they're probably including all, all the, the soldiers and everything. Obviously, the Roman Empire had a very large army at one point, but in, you know, debauchery and nutrition was probably pretty poor. But they also, for the most part, had to work their asses off on a daily basis just to survive. So when you look at the average life expectancy of humankind going out through down through history over the past 2,000 years, you can see a correlation that those who were rich had a softer life. They were able to live longer. But... The average person who were the paupers, who weren't royalty, who weren't the ruling and elite class, they weren't as lucky to live so long. And now you're crying about having to get any kind of job at all. Is not what I went to college for. And now you're out there in the street screaming and, and you know, you didn't even vote, by the way. What was it over over sixty percent of the people that were uh, protesters in Oregon uh, couple, uh, last week that were arrested? They found out that sixty percent of them didn't even vote. Most of them weren't even registered to vote. And you're out there protesting because your candidate lost. Well, Hillary wasn't your candidate because you didn't even bother to vote, let alone register to vote. You didn't even vote. You know who else didn't vote is uh, Kanye West. Have you seen this nonsense? Kanye West was on the stage excoriating Jay-Z and Beyonce. Well, okay, that's one point for Kanye. I'll give him that. But after all, it is Kanye. And then he said if he voted, he would have voted for Trump. 
So even Kanye West didn't vote. What, what the hell are you people screaming about if you don't vote? If you did not participate, then you can't, you know, you can't talk about anything. Plain it, what, what would, uh, what it, was Al Sharpton would probably say, if you did not participate, then you cannot enunciate. I think that's something how he'd say it. And now, now he's hospitalized, and they're saying that he's uh, exhausted. What, what? He gave a 30-minute concert, went on a 10-minute rant, and left the stage. What's he exhausted from? Now, people, a lot of people today, well, not the older generation, but you youngsters, you millennials, you're under 35 or so, you don't really fully understand. Most of you don't know what real hard work is, especially when it comes to physical labor. And many of you will thumb your nose up at physical labor. Let me tell you some of the, uh, the future insight here. Six-figure incomes or six-figure careers now and going into the near future for this millennial generation are trade jobs because millennials don't want to get their hands dirty. So if you want to be a plumber, electrician, carpenter, uh, machinist, you know, those blue-collar jobs where you have to get up at five and six in the morning. You're going to find yourself making thirty to fifty dollars an hour, while while your uh, your your friends are over flipping burgers, demanding fifteen bucks an hour. You'll be getting on with your life, and you'll be able to buy that Vet or Mustang GT or even probably Maserati if you want to down the line, and they won't, because there's a shortage. We're coming up on a shortage of of many of these trade blue collar types of, uh, of jobs. There, there's not enough, not enough qualified people entering the fields to fill all the needs. And we're starting to see wage pressure, uh, wages go up. That's what happens, supply and demand. So if you're, if you're sitting on your parents' couch right now in the basement or what have you, or you have a kid that's doing that, Point them in the direction of working with their hands, a blue collar position. There's there's nothing wrong with work, working physically hard. I've done it. Oh, you want to talk working physically hard? Why don't you send your Why don't you send your college age kid to UPS? I did that and still went to college. Yeah, at the same time. Third shift, UPS. Nothing wrong with hard physical labor. Builds character. But if you're not willing to participate, then like Al Sharpton would say, you can't enunciate. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Eccles Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement. 
But now, there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. That's the number to call should you wish to join me here live here on the Rod Eccles Show this morning. Um, here's something that may have slipped by you overnight, and the Los Angeles Times. By, by the way, you know you you news organizations, you newspapers. Um, uh, what is it? The um. Washington Post, especially. You know, there's a reason why your circulation is down, is because you think that you're so smart and your articles are so wonderful uh, that people that you're going to force people to pay you before they even get to read one. I don't even bother going to the Washington Post anymore because their stories that they want to charge me to read, I go, you know, easy to bing it. And Yahoo it and find the exact story somewhere else. That that's that always cracks me up. So I need I stop going to the Washington Post because they're just too difficult to try to read online. And, and some of the others are the same way. New York Times only allows you to read so many free articles every week or month. LA Times always uh, bitches and bemoans that you've got your ad blocker on. So you know what I do? I turn my ad blocker off so I can get to that that um, that story, and as soon as I as soon as it comes up that story, I put the ad blocker back on. And because the ads take so long to load, <laughs> they usually get blocked anyway. There's ways around that kind of stuff, so you don't you don't get all that kind of stuff tagged on your uh, uh, on your computer. But this one comes from the ad, the anti-ad blocking Los Angeles Times. Secessionist. I know you're going to be all broken up over this, by the way. Most of America is just going to, they're, they're going to be beside themselves. Uh, secessionists formally launch quest for California's independence. Now, this is how ignorant people are. And, and, and I'm, I'm not calling them stupid. Just ignorant. It's ignorance on display. Now, there's a gentleman. He's got a gray goatee. So I'm going to assume he's not a millennial. I'm going to assume he's older than 35. And he's in this picture. And he's wearing a baseball cap. And in this picture, he's holding a sign that says, California is a nation, not a state. Well, actually, technically... They mean the same thing. It does. <laughs> I I know, but they're real. I know what they mean. But I'm just 
if you're going to go about trying to do something like that, you, you probably, you're probably going to want to make sure that you've got your terms correct. Now, granted, you know, 99.999% of the millennials that see that are not going to pick up on that. Uh, however, those people who actually are going to be running such a thing will pick up on that and probably they should pick on them for it. You should know better. We're not done with this one yet. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. 
Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Six zero three eight three five three two two six is the number. If you wish to call in and chime in about what we're discussing this morning, this bright sunny morning here in um, in the Granite State. Well, it's not fully sunny. It's what a, I don't know. Still don't know the difference. I forget my Earth science when it comes to the differences between partly sunny and partly cloudy and. Well, I mean, I know what mostly sunny and mostly cloudy means, but what's the difference between partly sunny and partly cloudy? Any weather fanatics out there, weather people, meteorologist or lay meteorologist? You can chime in on, on what the difference And don't cheat and go Google it either. I can do that. If you don't know already, I mean, go look for your own edification, but if you don't know, then don't don't. Tell me later, after just after you look it up. Uh, most of us probably don't remember a lot of our Earth science when it comes to sim- simple weather terms and, and the different differences between those terms, like partly sunny versus partly cloudy. Because um, we know what mostly sunny and mostly cloudy is, but, you know. Well, I guess, well, I guess it's self-explanatory. But but then wouldn't it be mostly cloudy? Because you got cloudy, you know. If it was partly sunny, wouldn't it be mostly cloudy? So I guess those all those terms are kind of they do have their own specific meaning, but they're kind of mixed up. Any of it, these people out in California. So what they're saying now is the supporters of a plan uh, for. The California to secede from the union took their first formal steps. Yesterday, submitting a proposed ballot measure to the state attorney general's office in the hopes of a statewide vote as soon as 2018. Now, let me tell you something right now. You got to ask yourself, who's go- who are they going to get to be? Uh, um, who are they going to get to sign this petition? Well, most of the petition signers are going to be in the southern half of the state. Now, I've been out to California numerous times. Let me tell you, the northern half of California already has an effort going on to break away and split California. Uh, I think it was it back in um, er- earlier this year, there was a plan that came out to actually break California up into as many as nine smaller states. California is not united, which is the problem with all you people who are still whining that Hillary won the popular vote. Well, not really. If you look at it again, even if you look at uh, California, if you look at a county map, sure, L.A. and San Diego, that's where most of the population of this or, you know, the greater portion of population is in the state. But you move farther north, it turns red, not blue. So, you know, they, they, they talk about that they want to get rid of the Electoral College. Well, here's the fairer way, as they would put it, or more fair way, as properly espoused. You would say that the best thing to do would be to award uh, the Electoral College delegation or votes based on district, House district. And if we actually looked across this country state by state, county by county, we would find that Trump would have been would have won by a massive landslide 
Electoral College landslide. Because most states are, you know, winner take all type of thing. So if you're in California, you're you're kind of disenfranchised if if the bulk of the population look at Pennsylvania, for instance. Th- this time around they were able to overcome the major city centers of, of uh, Pennsylvania and go for Trump. When uh, obviously in California, that was not the case for Northern California. They, they want to, they, and they've already got a name picked out. The state of Jefferson. Now, now, now you get these nut jobs in Southern California that are whining and bitching and moaning because their person didn't win, even though she won the popular vote. We're gonna, we want to secede now. Uh, good luck with that. You'll be bankrupt within five years the way you're going. I mean, look at L- L.A. is on the brink of bankruptcy already. The state is hemorrhaging, uh, hemorrhaging population. Do you think they'd be, you'd be able to sustain yourself on your own? Well, you know, if California were its own country, we'd be the world's fifth largest economy. Not for long. Do you realize that you're the fifth, your world's fifth largest economy because you're a part of the United States and you benefit from all the other 49 states contributing to your economy? You become your own country. You're on your own, Jack. You get no money from the federal government. Yeah, try keeping up that those massive arteries of roadway up on, on, on your budgets. I mean, California tax is already through the roof. Not to mention, you're also allowing a bunch of people to come in that, that leech off your system. Are you going to... You know what? I if, I if I were a conspiracy man, and I'm not, but if I were, I would bet you the conspiracy is thus. This movement is being sponsored by Mexico. Mexico has always said that, that somehow, some way, they'd reclaim California because California belongs to Mexico. They'd get California back. So if California secedes from the USA, are they going to go it on their own? Uh, no, they won't be able to. I really don't think they would. They'd, they'd have to join Mexico because Canada sure as hell doesn't want them. There's nobody else for him to go to. They're going to go across the pond, the Pacific pond to Asia. Yeah, let's be part of Japan or something. Even they wouldn't want him either. And besides, if they, if they were to go uh, and be a part of another country, I think they would be highly surprised by the difference in laws and the difference in freedoms that they have. You think those people are nut jobs now because they don't think that my voice isn't being heard. I have a right. <laughs> yeah, well, try doing it in some other countries and see what kind of rights you don't have. Good luck. All I can say is good luck with that. Uh, my only problem is is that I, I, I feel sorry for those people that are in, in the northern half of the state. Uh, hopefully they would be able to break away into the state of Jefferson before the rest of before the rest of California slid off into Mexico. Because it'd be terrible if that happened to those people up there. Because they're still very solidly conservative, constitutional, red. Uh, that's that's you know, those those people are unbelievable now because they didn't get their way. Now, now, what happens if in uh, 2020 um, a Democrat unseats Trump or or keeps his predecessor from uh, entering the White House? What happens then? They're going to all of a sudden say, oh, we're back. Now, I say if you go down that road, you got to keep going. No stopping and turning back. <laughs> that, uh, they haven't even gone that far in Texas yet. I mean, there's a lot of calls for Texas to go back to the Republic of Texas instead of being the state of Texas. But, um, yeah. It, Texas would be able to stand on their own, by the way. Texas would be able to stand on their own. 
Sure, they'd get hit in the wall a little bit with the lack of federal funds coming into Texas. Every state would. But there are a few states other than California that depend so heavily on federal dollars, which means the rest of the country is paying for California. And without that money, California would not survive uh, financially and economically. And I I think you'd probably see an exodus of a lot of companies. I don't think Silicon, if you wanted to be a separate uh, company or country, I don't think a lot of Silicon Valley would take the risk of staying there. All right, these people, they don't, they don't think about their, the ramifications of their actions. They just, go with the, they just go with their feelings. That's all they care about. My feelings got hurt because you didn't vote for Hillary. You didn't vote for Hillary either because you didn't vote at all. Well, you should have taken my feelings and voted for me. You know, isn't that a trip? These, pe- these kids are out there, well, not kids, but millennials are out in the streets protesting, but they were too damn lazy to get their butts off the couch and go vote. Can you believe this? Hey, just just amazing. Um, got a I got an audio cut here from Andrew Dice, and he's uh, he's ranting on something. Look, the other uh, yesterday, I guess it was um, pretty apparent. Uh, let's see, I know I put it in uh, Trump. President-elect Trump cancels a meeting with, um, with the New York Times. Evidently, sources that were inside the meeting with the, uh, with the lamestream media the other day in Trump Tower, um, it's all over the place. There's a quote out there stating thus, it was an effing firing squad. Evidently, President-elect Trump it took his new status in office to heart as president of the, well, president-elect, but president of the United States. And he just lit into the lamestream media. He called them out for being liars, for being biased, for being deceitful. And he just laid into them. I think this is a new day for the, for the media. I think the media just got a wake up call big time. No, they're not obviously if you're listen, looking listening to the New York Times or reading the New York Times, they're not getting it. But this is how how stupid the New York Times is. Now Trump cancels a meeting with the with the New York Times, basically. They were supposed to meet with Trump, but he tweeted this stuff out. He says, I, I canceled today's meeting with the failing New York Times. When the terms and condition of the meeting were changed at the last moment, not nice. Now here you have a here here you have a, a media news outlet, a lamestream media news outlet, the day after Trump blast the uh, the other parts of the lamestream media, you know CNN, MSNBC, NBC, all those you know TV guys, executives and news anchors were all there, I guess. And he even called some of them out by name, according to this inside source. And uh, it was not a pretty scene. It was not pretty. Now, I got to tell you, he he probably pissed off a lot of of those news people. But you know what? They forget that this guy is Donald Trump. He's not. Now, frankly, all the things that Donald Trump is already talking about doing, now, I, I want to ask you, you you still never Trumpers. Would the person that you supported, would they have already been on the bandwagon on this road that Trump is already on in draining the swamp? Would they have done that? I got to tell you, I don't think that there's another candidate that would have. Now, now, remember, Trump was not my first choice. But I got to tell you, my first and second choice would not be on this path. And for all you cruisers out there, I don't think Ted Cruz would be on this path either. So, uh, you know, this, 
this whole particular religious notion that God has given us who we need at this moment, that probably is precisely accurate. Because I don't think nary one of the other 16 or 15 or 16 candidates would be taking this road that Trump is already on. I don't think any of them would. And I think that because, and, and, and that's the reason for the, Donald Trump is shock and awe. These people are still in shock, not just over the fact that he won amid their attempted cheating, but the fact that he is doing what he's doing in spite of what they're saying about him still. Oh, he's in disarray. He's bumbling. He's a, he doesn't know what he's doing. And, blah. and yet he just keeps plodding along in six gear, doing 150 miles per hour. And these people just, and he's not giving in or responding to their BS. And again, they just don't get it. Donald Trump is not a politician that is subject to the whims of the lamestream media. They just can't accept that they've lost their power in that arena. They can't accept it. They're in denial. Trump also tweeted, perhaps a new meeting will be set up with the New York Times. In the meantime, they continue to cover me inaccurately and with a nasty tone. And then he tweeted uh, tweeted once more, the failing New York Times just announced that complaints about them are at a 15-year high. I can fully understand that, but why would they announce such a thing? I'm with Trump. Oh, that's, you know, the New York Times complaint uh, complaints uh, are up to a 15-year high should be something that the, uh, the New York Post reports about the Times. Why would the Times go out there and tell people it's re- yeah, yeah, you know, we got our complaints are at a 15 year high. Is that a badge of honor? I look, their ad, what is their ad revenue down like 90% or something? I mean, they're laying off people left and right. I didn't, I'm sorry, folks, but you know, the person that you tried to prop up lost. Lost big, to your surprise even. And then you get a dress down from the guy who's going to be taking over. And yet, you still want to go out there and give him fodder? I mean, y'all must become some kind of special stupid. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. 
This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. Don't doubt me on this, folks. Don't doubt. You know what's going to happen out there is the fact as they're going to um, they're going to vote. California is going to vote to not secede from the union, and then the Ninth Circus Court of Appeals out there is going to decide that that vote is invalid, and they'll and they'll <laughs> and they'll rule that California will secede from the union because that's supposedly what the people want, even though they don't, they, even though they didn't vote that way. Is this not what they did with a lot of referendums? Uh, the marriage thing. Remember the gay marriage thing? What was it called? Pro- Proposition 8? Prop 8? When Californians, including over 85% of the blacks that voted, overwhelmingly turned down the special right for gays to be married or to get married. And then the, Cal- and then the uh, what, Ninth Circuit of Appeals Court over there decided, well, that vote was invalid. So the yeah, so the federal court can invalidate um, an election. Just so you know, federal court can do that. But uh, yeah, so if you are, I mean, just uh, un un unbelievable stuff, folks. Just unbelievable stuff. So they still have two two point eight million votes to count. Speaking of federal judges, there's a judge out there that's saying if you don't like Trump, you should probably go back, go to another country. And he said this to a bunch of newly minted legal citizens. Oh, it, I'm, is that judge going to keep his job? 
I, I don't know. I mean, you can't you can't sit on the bench and tell tell people new citizens. Well, if you don't like Trump, go somewhere else. Now, I don't know if the if you know the judge was actually a Trump supporter or not, but actually, he just basically may. I guess he didn't want to see them join the ranks of the protesters. Um, you know, this is the good old U.S. of A. Right? Yes, it is. We'll be back. We got a lot more to talk about. A lot more to go over. Don't go anywhere. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States, this is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportsyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today, 
or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Toys, Since 1947, toys, the United toys, States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. Welcome back, you liberty lovers all across the globe and you phantasmal ecclesiastites. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live once again from the Bunkerized studio somewhere within the great grand estate of New Hampshire where the state motto is Today I would live like free to or die. American people with an- uh, almost there. Uh, live free or die. It is not big government or bust. Here it is on Tuesday which is this week's Thursday, uh, November the 22nd, in the year of our Lord, 2016. Now, actually, some people have tomorrow off. Do you know that there are school, some school districts across this country that, that have had the entire week off? Get this entire week off. Now, I'm trying to figure out why would they do that? You know, I, I, it's not worth going to school for two days? Then then why do they have half days? If it's not worth going to school for two full days, why do they even bother having a half day? I can't figure that one out. Um, so some some kids, you know, they, maybe your child or grandchild is sitting at home right now because school is closed for the Thanksgiving holiday week. Now, I can understand how people, you know, schools will take tomorrow off, Wednesday, uh, simply because tomorrow is also the traditionally the busiest travel day of the year. And, you know, if you're taking a plane or something, you know, most kids are probably not going to be in class anyway if you have to drive or what have you in order to be with uh, family. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that live more than what what is the uh was it four hours i think is the is the precedent or the the cutoff for distance if you travel travel less than three hours you're not traveling any distance i don't know three hours you know is that 180 miles away roughly 200 miles so that's a good distance In, in this part of the world especially you can cross a few states in 200 miles I know in some states, 200 miles won't even get you halfway, but 
Uh, in many states here on the east of the Mississippi, 200 miles will get you more than just one state. It'll get you two, three, maybe even four states, uh, depending on how you drive it. So I think actually you could, is, I'll have to look at that. You might be able to hit, well, probably just f- uh, five out of the six states in 200 miles. Be a little difficult because Maine is a little, little uh, it's stuck kind of out of, it's hard to get to and then just continue on. But if you did a loop from maybe starting in Connecticut and you went up through uh, Massachusetts into Vermont and crossed over to New Hampshire. Um, well, over to Maine, I guess. Well, I suppose if you started in Rhode Island, if you start in Rhode Island and head over to Connecticut, and then Connecticut up through Massachusetts to Vermont, through New Hampshire over to Maine, that might be a 200 mile loop. Just saying. You, could, you, you might be able to do that. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe that's a little bit more than 200 miles. But it's, you'd, get, you'd get through most of the New England states if you drove that way in 200 miles. Just saying. But 200 miles is not exactly a short distance, but many Americans will be traveling uh, more than four hours to get to their destination for Thanksgiving. So I understand why the day before, I guess, you know, kids wouldn't be in school anyway, so they decide to shut down. But why they have all week off, I don't know. I do not know. I know some. There are some people out in the in the bigger states out west that are listening to this, and they're saying, 200 miles, especially like in Arizona. My count is 200 miles long, Rod. What you talking about? Can you get into four or five states in 200 miles? Oh. So, <laughs> no, there are some big. There are some counties out west in the, some of these larger states that are uh, the size of states here. In, in the Northeast, really. How would you like to have a county the size of a state? That's an interesting way of trying to do business. But anyway, uh, welcome back. Here we are, call in number 603-835-3226. want to get to a, a story here about, uh, as I mentioned earlier, about Trump. Trump's taken on the... Well, he's not taking on the world. He's just taking on taking on the American establishment. And that's got a lot of the establishment shaking in their boots. Now, I don't know if um there are still some in the in the Republican Party that are still holdouts, but there are some that see we'll see if they act if they're actually coming on board by their votes after Trump is inaugurated when he starts to push for certain legislation. Let's see what the, let's see what they vote. But they sound like many of them sound like they're on board because they think maybe they think uh, that if they don't get on board, they're going to be out, which is a good way to think for them. Maybe they'll start doing things that we actually want and doing things the right way and stop doing things to try to appease the left. Because the left is, I mean, let's face it, the left is now in the minority. I don't care how you look at it. You can possibly say that you know we had all these. Um, you know, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote and that's, a, that's under protest because of all the fraud that has gone on. Um, but there are a lot of uh, people on the middle, in the middle and on the right that didn't vote. I mean, by no means is, how can I put this? Considering the low turnout that we normally have for national elections, it is very difficult for somebody to argue, either from the right or the left, that the person who won has a mandate by the country to do it, what they're about to do. That's inaccurate. Uh, it's, it's even inaccurate to say, unless they won by an overwhelming landslide, uh, uh, on the number of votes that they have... Um, a mandate from the voters. But in this particular case, you've got Donald Trump who has a, if you look at the electoral map, 
Almost the entire country is red with a few splotches of blue scattered throughout. I mean, really, that's what it is. So when you're looking at land-wise, you can see that Trump is by far, would by far, if you're going to use that as a measuring stick, because, you know, it was the other way around a few years ago with Obama. You know, and uh, supposedly Obama had a mandate. Yeah, I got the mandate. You know, do this healthcare thing, even though poll after poll after poll says no. Uh, I still got mandate because I won. And I'm the president, so get over it. And by the same token, now it's flipped the other direction. Trump won, so get over it. And I think what he wants to do, and you got a lot of people on the right in the uh, Republican Party who now seem to think that the um, that this is a good thing. Yep. But I have a cut here of, of President-elect Trump talking about what he wants to do his first 100 days in office. ...date on the White House transition and our policy plans for the first 100 days. Our transition team is working very smoothly, efficiently, and effectively. Truly great and talented men and women, patriots indeed, are being brought in, and many will soon be a part of our government, helping us to make America great again. My agenda will be based on a simple core principle, putting America first. Whether it's producing steel, building cars, or curing disease, I want the next generation of production and innovation to happen right here on our great homeland, America, creating wealth and jobs for American workers. As part of this plan, I've asked my transition team to develop a list of executive actions we can take on day one to restore our laws and bring back our jobs. It's about time. These include the following. On trade, I am going to issue our notification of intent to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a potential disaster for our country. Instead, we will negotiate fair bilateral trade deals that bring jobs and industry back onto American shores. On energy, I will cancel job-killing restrictions on the production of American energy, including shale energy and clean coal, creating many millions of high-paying jobs. That's what we want. That's what we've been waiting for. On regulation, I will formulate a rule which says that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be eliminated. So important. On national security, I will ask the Department of Defense and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff to develop a comprehensive plan to protect America's vital infrastructure from cyber attacks and all other form of attacks. On immigration, I will direct the Department of Labor to investigate all abuses of visa programs that undercut the American worker. On ethics reform, as part of our plan to drain the swamp, we will impose a five-year ban on executive officials becoming lobbyists after they leave the administration, and a lifetime ban on executive officials lobbying on behalf of a foreign government. These are just a few of the steps we will take to reform Washington and rebuild our middle class. I will provide more updates in the coming days as we work together to make America great again for everyone, and I mean everyone. Well, that last thing, do you think Clinton would have, uh, Hillary Clinton would be making moves to uh, to ban lobbyists and, and foreign lobbyists? Absolutely not, because she, she would have to ban herself, um, wouldn't she? Speaking of Hillary, by the way, I know some people are kind of upset about this, but there's a source inside the Trump camp now that says Trump won't go after Hillary. We'll cover that in just a second. Um, but draining the swamp and, and all those other things that he's talking about, about the first hundred days, day one, starting day one. I mean, this guy, is, is there anybody else out there who can keep up with Donald Trump? I mean, seriously, it's reported he gets... Less than six hours of sleep at night. Four to six hours, that's all he sleeps. He doesn't sleep. I don't know how he does it. And this is the way he's lived his life. And supposedly, if you don't get you know at least eight hours of sleep, you're going to shorten your life. And this guy's already 70 years old. And he's a horse. He's not slowing down. I don't... 
I understand how you can get by on six hours, you know, every once in a while. I do that. But seven days a week, 365 a year? I mean, that, that's the, from all reports. This is the way he's lived his life for years now. Now, some people think that Donald Trump is not a is not a real human. <laughs> he's a he's an alien. Isn't that what Men in Black are all about? The movies Men in Black. What did Tommy Lee Jones say about Elvis? Elvis is not dead. He just went home. But you gotta wonder. I mean, how does how does he do? How does he do it? Well, evidently he doesn't drink for one. Um, and as far as medicines are concerned, prescribed or nefarious or recreational, he doesn't touch them. Maybe that's the key. Uh, I don't. I I like wine too much to. And now I like a good, very good scotch too much. I probably want to give that up. But hey, if that allows you to. Maybe I should think about it. If you can get, get by with only four to six hours of sleep and not be tired and still be cognizant and on top of your game, look, he's worth a few billion dollars. It's hard to argue with that. But imagine this, a, a guy who's president of the United States and only sleeps about six hours a night. He's always on the job. You couldn't ask for a better person than that. I mean, the only the only other type of person that would be better with somebody who's really like a shark and doesn't need any sleep at all, but there's no human being on the planet that we know of that can do that. But here's six hours or less versus some of the time, you know, what was the, his uh, first tenure? Didn't we hear that, that Obama would meander down to the Oval Office sometime, usually during the weekday around 10 a.m.? I want my president to be on the job early, Jack. And uh looks like Trump is um Trump is the person to do that. And there's also some flack going on about Melania not wanting to spend, you know, live in the White House. Look, look, I told you the White House would probably be a step down for the Trumps. Really. But uh, you know, hey, who wants to live in that kind of a bubble? I don't blame her. You know, if it, you know, you got Trump Tower in New York City versus the the White House. And frankly, you know, Trump Tower might be a more secure location unless somebody wants to bring down the entire building. It's going to be hard harder to get to them there than probably um at the White House, but um I know they can still bring down the whole building. That's what they did with the World Trade Centers, but that's Less likely to happen now with at least with an airplane than it was back then. But hey, you know, she likes her home. I you know what? If they're not living there, and guess what? We say we save a few bucks. And would you believe there are people that are saying that it's illegal for Trump not to take a salary? I who does that? The guy doesn't want it. He says, Okay, I'll take a dollar. No, you can't do that. You gotta take the whole four hundred K. These people are trying to force him to take a salary he doesn't want or need. Go figure. This guy, I mean, Trump just can't win. I don't need the money. Well, you got to take it. Well, that's Washington that he's trying to drain. You're listening to me, your lovable host, L. Rod, here on The Rod Eccles Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. 
$15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. You know, Trump is, um, he's, a, he's a kind of person, he's a no-nonsense kind of guy. Everybody, everybody who's ever worked with him or for him um, can tell you that. Uh, he's, he is such a guy that doesn't, you know, he will, he will take the best and get the best out of people. He'll take the best people and get even better out of them than they thought they could do themselves. And, and, and if, you know, one of the th- interesting things is if you've ever listened to, I know that Trump has do, is, uh, done the, um, uh, the Apprentice, you know, reality TV star Donald Trump is now president. Oh, I get it. Oh, ho, ho. But if you've ever listened or read any of the interviews before the Celebrity Apprentice from the original Apprentices, if you've read or listened to any of them, who've won, and most of the ones who did not win, they will tell you one of the highlights of their career and the lessons that they've learned from Donald Trump were absolutely worth it. And they will tell, they have said it. They have found Donald Trump to be straightforward, honest, extremely hardworking, very bright, very smart, very knowledgeable. Yeah, he comes across, they, you know, uh, they, they say he comes across as, you know, TV, it's all for show. He's kind of, he, you know, the arrogance part. But behind the scenes, he's just very down to earth and matter of fact. That's what people are saying about Donald Trump who've worked with him and for him. Now, I don't know many people that have said that about Hillary Clinton. In fact, a lot of people about Hillary Clinton just say that she's a nasty, mean bitch. Excuse my French. I mean, from from the Secret Service people who 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 protected her to uh, people uh, who actually worked in Bill Clinton's White House as part of her staff um, have commented on just how much of a nasty woman she was. Going all the way back to Arkansas, as her days as First Lady of Arkansas, uh, people didn't like her there either. You're not getting a lot of that from Trump. And, but now you get from the left, oh, Trump's a racist, Trump's a racist. I, I mean, if you look at his, 
he's a he's a racist, he's a sexist, he's you know he's he's an anti-Jew. If you look at his organization, I, his organization was probably more diverse than than most president uh, administrations. Seriously, guy is not a racist. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care what your ba- what your ethnic background is. All he cares about is your brain and your work ethic. Can you get the job done that he wants done? That's all he cares about. Nothing else matters as the way it should be. You know, the good old Martin Luther King thing, you know, it, you know he, he dreamed of a day when a man was measured by the content of his character, not the color of his skin. And now Donald Trump seems to be the one person doing that, even though Democrats claim that they've done it and haven't done it. Donald Trump is doing it, and they're mad at him for it. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved, and four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though 
you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. There you go, buddy. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. Six zero three eight three five three two two six. That is a number to call should you wish to join me here live here on the Rod Eccles Show. Always uh, liking to take your calls. That would be good if you have something to say in response to what I have been discussing with you this morning. Um, something that the left doesn't like to do, by the way. I I, I don't know how many. I, I have to go back to this. I I can't tell you how many times. That when I first started doing this back in 2009 over on Blog Talk Radio, that I would listen to progressive, you know, that's a code word for liberal, progressive radio programs over on Blog Talk. And I'd be in their chat rooms or I'd call them up. Can't tell you how many times I got banned, hung up on and banned. These people do not have an open mind. These people don't care about anybody else's opinion but their own. And if you have an opinion that challenges their opinion, I'm going to give you an example. Today we have all this notion about Donald Trump. Donald Trump wants to ban Muslims and nobody's ever banned an entire race of people from this country before. Nobody's ever, you know, picked on a religion. And like, are you kidding me? Can we just go over the past 100 years in this country? World War I, Woodrow Wilson instituted certain types of immigration bans. World War II, FDR did the same thing. Not to mention FDR was also the president who started this this whole FEMA camp thing with internment camps for Asian Americans. Oh yeah, it didn't matter if they were actually born here and they were citizens. Oh, they all had to be rounded up. That was FDR. And of course, you know, we didn't have real, normal, normalized, general Immigration from 1924 to 1965. And in 1979, Jimmy Carter put a ban on Iranian immigration. But all of a sudden, all of those were Democrat presidents, by the way. And Democrat presidents presided over, over a period of no real legal, general legal immigration for like 60 years. But all of a sudden, now Donald Trump, notices a problem and says we need to fix this and before we can fix it we got to stop it so then we have the time to fix it and all of a sudden he's a racist well how come jimmy carter wasn't a racist when he didn't let let any more iranians in and after they took over our embassy in 79 how come fdr wasn't a racist when when he i don't see anybody going back in time and calling fdr a racist for rounding up Asian Americans and putting them in internment camps. You know, today we'd call them FEMA camps. How is anybody doing that? They and, and and let's face it, for the most part, Asian Americans were of no threat to the mainland here in the USA. They were American citizens. He didn't allow Germans either, by the way.
And a lot of these people that were not American citizens that were of Asian or, you know, Japanese or German descent were booted out of the country after we got into World War II. You know, his, history's a bitch. It really is. Because then the truth comes out. But you, you have these same people that are saying now that Donald Trump is a racist, a bigot, a womanizer, that, you know, sexist, homophobe, all that kind of crap. None of it is true, but that's what they're saying. And then you go out and you got Gallup has got a poll out today. Uh, record high, 77% of Americans perceived nation as divided. But if you look at the numbers, um, only 49% believe that Donald Trump will divide He'll do more to divide the U.S. than unite it. Well, isn't that kind of funny? Because what is it? Did you know by the popular vote, forty-eight percent voted for Hillary and forty-seven percent? Well, I mean, I'm just rounding numbers here. It was pretty even. It was like uh, basically forty-eight percent voted Hillary, thirty-seven percent voted Trump. It was like 83 or 30, uh, 48.3% versus 47.7, but let's just call it 48, 47. So far by, by today's numbers that, that we know, even though not counting or discounting the illegal votes or the still the 2.8 million votes left to be counted in California and it's a whole mess, but let's just go with those numbers. So is it any surprise that 49% would say that Trump is going to do more to divide us? Did Obama do anything to unite this country? Or did he do things to more, more divide us? Well, of course, he did things that divided this country even more. Obama is the single factor that has boosted the probability of a race war in this country. I believe that Donald Trump will, will extinguish those race war fires. I mean, it's just insanity to, th- to think that these people are going to allow him to be, try to be successful. And, you know, you shouldn't expect them to, because obviously we on the right tried to, well, you know, the Republican Party in Washington didn't try to fight him very hard. But we, the people, tried to fight Barack Obama pretty hard from the right the last eight years. We knew that his, that his policies were junk crap, going to divide the country, going to make us worse off, going to make us weaker economically, militarily, and we're going to make us a laughing stock the, on the planet as far as uh, you know, how nations are, are, are viewed. Uh, we knew that we were losing our freedom and that the Constitution was under attack. So yeah, we fought him tooth and nail, at least the public did, the people did, uh, from, the, from the middle to the right. But Obama didn't try to unite us at all. And now Trump is supposed, hey, Donald, you know, you should try to, you should be a uniter, go middle of the road. No, that's a bunch of BS. Isn't it funny how whenever the right wins, we're supposed to, you know, unite now, you know, be a uniter, go middle of the road, cross the aisle. But when the left wins the White House, no, he's got a mandate to do whatever he wants. Interesting. So no, I don't believe that these people are going to come on board because he's going to start dismantling their socialistic society, utopia society. Of course, it's not a utopia. It's a, it's a complete and utter mess. But they believe that, you know, getting stuff from government, as if government just gets money out of the blue. You know, government creates money. No, government really doesn't. It really doesn't. I, again, it's just ignorance on their part about how our government works. We haven't, we haven't, the United States hasn't made money. The United States government hasn't made money since they brought forth the, uh, the Federal Reserve System. You know, technically speaking, do you realize, and I know this is going to play into conspiracy theorists here, but do you, technically, do you realize that countries that have a central banking system outside of their government treasury do not own their own money. 
Do you realize the United States has a federal reserve system that is a private banking system, thus it is not a part or a department of the Department of the Treasury? Therefore, that dollar bill that you have in your pocket does not actually belong to the U.S. government. Technically speaking, if you were to actually trace this and go, if you wanted to be ultra-legal, legalistic about this, you would understand that what I just said is true. Now, that's, that, and to some people, that's scary. But the problem is, is that we don't bother thinking about, talking about, or trying to find out what the real truth is. And we just go on as if things were, you know, always, you know, copacetic and, and wonderful and utopic and euphoric. And before we know it, we get entrapped by this crap that just doesn't work. And everybody was euphoric about, you know, Barack Obama being the first African-American president. But later, later, African-Americans started saying, well, he's the first black president. And understand, there is a big difference with that. As I mentioned long ago, Barack Obama was not the first African-American First of all, he's half white. Second of all, his dad was not an American. His dad was African, Kenyan. And by depending on what, if, who you want to believe as far as lineage is, is concerned, he wasn't even full African black either. So he was the first black or half black president, but not African American president. And, there, and, and blacks in this country, African-Americans in this country, started to make that distinction, not just conservative blacks, but liberal blacks too. I got a story here in the stack, in, in the uh, paper pile here. Where, uh, do, do, do. Mil- Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee blacks dropped Clinton on election day. You know, this, we, we know that, that Hillary Clinton got slightly less than 80% of the black vote, where Barack Obama got 90 and 95% of the black vote. She lost 10 to 15 points on election day. And that is huge. And here's a story from Yahoo News of all places. Um, Wisconsin's largest city is also America's most racially segregated one. Now, I got to admit, I didn't know that. I don't know how they're measuring it. But I didn't know Milwaukee, of all places. Um, According to a study based on the 2010 census. Again, I don't really understand how they're basing that. I mean, people just don't, you know, blacks don't live next door to whites who live next door to uh, Asians who live next door to Latinos, I guess, in Milwaukee. They all live in, you know, they stay in their little enclaves, little Africa, little Havana, little, you know, little Italy, and they don't mix at all in in Milwaukee. I don't know. I've never been there. Um, Wisconsin served up one of the biggest surprises of an election day that shocked uh, America and the world, and no one thought Midwestern states would fall to, uh, this Midwestern state would fall to the Republican billionaire. Clinton was so sure of victory, she did not even bother to campaign here after the primaries. She probably thought she had Wisconsin wrapped up, said Ronald Roberts, a 67-year-old retiree. He owns a shop called Bill the Butcher. You can't take voters for granted because they'll stay home. Or they'll vote for Trump. And evidently, that's what happened in Milwaukee. More than enough blacks went to the other side or stayed at home that made a big difference in Wisconsin. Um, You know, folks, you got 49%. They're, they're, they don't want to unite. Do you understand? They don't. And I'm not blaming them for, for wanting to stand up for their convictions. They should. Now, their convictions are stupid. 
And standing up your uh, for your conviction, convictions does not mean you, you go out and you riot. That's not standing up for your convictions. That's criminal criminalistic behavior. You can stand up for your convictions without being a criminal. If you're a leftist, be a proud leftist. Go right ahead. I'm not going to agree with you, but at least you can be a proud leftist and have some dignity. You people rioting right now, you have no dignity. You're a bunch of whiny, sniveling, snot-nosed, runny-nosed little brats that need to be spanked, actually. You know, some people are going to think that's sexual, but it's not. By the way, the real unemployment rate is still at 9.5%. That's the U6 number. I've been touting that number all throughout Obama's administration because everybody's getting these rosy numbers at, you know, 5%, 4 4.8, 4.9. No, that's bullshit. It's 9.5%. 94 million Americans are still out of the labor force. There is no economic recovery going on. This guy is the first president never to have a 3% annualized uh, GDP increase in growth in at least one year of his presidency. He's had eight. Not the first president since they've been keeping track, ever. How is that a recovery? Um, Well, just asking the questions here. Some of you out there, maybe you have the answers, but... If, if you don't have at least 3% GDP growth year over year in at least one year of your administration after eight years, there's a problem. When you have 94 million Americans who are still unemployed in a U6 real true unemployment rate of 9.5%, there's a real problem. Look, whenever the unemployment rate is above, what was that number, 5.5%? If you get above 5.5%, uh, the, the person sitting in the Oval Office or that party is in danger of losing that seat. And we were told, you know, it's like 4, 4.8%, 4.9%. Yeah, that's why Clinton's going to win because the economy's roaring along. The reality on the ground is the economy is not roaring along and middle America knows it. They know it. So what did they try to do? Our wonderful liberals tried to pit the have-nots against the haves by saying, if you have and you don't want to give to those who have not via your taxes, then you're selfish. And the haves were saying, well, no, let these have-nots who, can, who are capable get up and get a job and become, become a have like the rest of us. How about contributing instead of taking from society? That's what the haves were telling the have-nots. And they were telling the have-nots that simply because you had somebody on the Democrat Party telling you that you needed to give to the have-nots because you had too much. That's purposefully dividing your country, not bringing them together. It's called class warfare. Oh, I almost forgot. Class warfare is just, you know, that's, that liberals can do that. If you do it and you're on the right, oh, now you're a racist. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Eccles Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 We've all heard of male enhancement 
But now, there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help Soldiers for Stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. You know, one of the things out out in California is also having some trouble with right now, besides their the liberals, without even thinking about it, rushing to, to file for a secession uh, referendum. Um, again, it wouldn't be such a great loss. What do you think would happen? I know I'm going to get off topic, but if California becomes its own country... And the big earthquake hits. Guess who's off the hook? The other 49 states. Just saying. You know, that that, that would be economically... De- I mean, the, the, yeah, I know the human toll would be terrible. But it would also be economically devastating. Um, it's such a large... Uh, look, look what it took to try to bring San Francisco back after that. What was that, 88? Uh, San Francisco quake. And it wasn't nearly as bad as it could be. Or could have been. I mean, that wasn't that wasn't the so-called big one that everybody's waiting for. You know, I get a I get if you live in California, especially Southern California, and they keep telling you that the big one is gonna happen. Which means, which is probably going to mean like near total utter destruction for a good portion of, let's say, L.A. County. Why the hell do you still live there? Me myself, I kind of like terra firma to stay firm under my feet. Uh, that, but the, again, that's just me. I'm try, I try to be sensible about those things. I'll put up with a snowstorm versus hurricanes and earthquakes any day. Which is why I don't know why people live in hurricane zones or. And I don't know why people live in, in mobile homes in Tornado Alley. I mean, that's, that's a tornado magnet. If I had to live in Tornado Alley, I'd be building my house out of brick and stone and steel. <laughs> it, wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't be a mobile home, that's for sure. Now, I'm not making fun of people who live in mobile homes, not at all. I'm just asking the question, why would you do that? Silicon Valley scrambles for a seat at the Trump table now that they've seen how Trump has dressed down the lamestream TV media and has really taken on the New York Times in the print media. Uh, Silicon Valley, who we all know actively worked against Donald Trump, is now finding themselves potentially on the outs. And they don't want to be on the outs. When it comes to working with the Trump administration, Silicon Valley finds itself in a bit of a bind. It needs to mend fences with an incoming president it derided without stirring up liberal employees and netizens. Uh, Trust me, the netizens would love it if you decided to come around and be real and act like Americans. 
uh, the, the netizens are really populated. Believe it or not, uh, when it comes to lots of social media, there is some stark differences. You do have conservatives who seem to populate places like Facebook but and LinkedIn. But in other places like Snapchat, it's more the younger generation, so they're more liberalistic. Um, by the way, I, I've heard the term more than once that Facebook now is uh, <laughs> is for old people. Now, I'm not sure how Mark Zuckerberg, the Zuck, feels about that, seeing how I don't think he considers himself to be old. Well, he's over 30 now, but he's still a millennial, so I don't think he likes to consider himself as being an old person. But let's face it, he's got a real business now, and the business model is is that millennials don't have any money. So he's got to cater to the people who have money. And those people who have money tend to be a little bit older than millennials. So, well, maybe I guess Facebook is now all about old people. Premature birth is the number one killer of babies. Those who survive often face birth defects and complications that affect them for life. For hundreds of thousands of families in the United States... This is the hardest thing they will ever have to face. And it's even harder on the baby. March of Dimes is providing education and support to families and funding life-saving research to give every baby a fighting chance. You can help. Do something today. Give them tomorrow at marchadimes.org slash tomorrow. See that cute little dog in the pet store window? Chances are it came from a puppy mill, a breeding facility that forces caged, neglected, and often sick dogs to churn out puppy after puppy to be sold for profit. Meanwhile, millions of wonderful, healthy pets end up in animal shelters. This leads to the killing of more than 9,000 by the end of today. But with one simple choice, you can help. Just by deciding to adopt instead of purchase your next pet. Animal shelters are full of amazing pets looking for a home. When you adopt your new best friend, not only are you saving a life, you're taking a stand against puppy mills. When your friends see the smart choice and impact you've made, they adopt their next pet and share with five of their friends, who share with five more. Before long, thousands get involved. Pet stores stop selling dogs from puppy mills, and even more lives are saved. And with your help, we can save them all. Visit bestfriends.org slash puppy mills to learn more. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody, squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The following letters were written by our troops. My dear fellow Americans, I truly appreciate your support. I was starting to wonder if people had forgotten about us over here. But then one of my buddies showed me this website. And now as tears are streaming down my face, I can see for sure that you haven't. Private Emily B., U.S. Army. It's so heartwarming to see the American people not letting the men and women of the armed forces be forgotten. Your letters make a group of grown men, battle-hardened and gruff, Act like a bunch of kids around a Christmas tree. Thanks. Staff Sergeant Matthew H., U.S. Army. Your support may be the most important thing our troops can carry with them. But don't take our word for it. Take theirs. To show your support, visit americasupportyou.mil. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Defense and the Ad Council. Thousands of families affected by disasters, like the recent wildfires, urgently need support. You can help the American Red Cross provide warm meals, shelter, and hope to families when they need it most. 
Please donate today to Red Cross Disaster Relief to help people affected by disasters, big and small. Go to redcross.org or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. Your support is critical. We can't do it without you. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines. Were you born from 1945 to 1965? People born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 65, you should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. A message from the CDC. Hello there, this is Nat King Cole, wishing you all a happy and a Merry Christmas. The joy of living is in the giving. So let's give lots of toys for tots. Toys, Since 1947, toys, toys, the United toys, States Marine Corps has been helping Santa fill his sleigh, making happier holidays for deserving children right in your community. Go to toysfortots.org and learn how you can make a difference. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. things about this whole notion of of these tech tech companies is they were just as well uh, they, they were actually just as bad as the lamestream media when it came to being against Trump and, and now isn't it kind of hypocritical shouldn't you stand by your convictions if you believe that Donald Trump was so evil and so bad why would you want constant privileged access to him right now well so we can keep an eye on him no that's a bunch of bs you're hypocrites now that you find yourselves out of the of the privileged set you're sitting on the outside you don't like it you guys they're not after the truth look we know that google was manipulating their their algorithm on on certain popular search terms during the election. We know this. We know that the lamestream media was extremely biased and in support of Hillary Clinton. All you got to do is if you had any doubt, all you had to do was just watch the returns on election night. Everybody, I mean, there are pictures coming out now about Hillary Clinton's cam, uh, campaign. They were celebrating about to pop the champagne corks and Behind the scenes at the media, lamestream media, you know, everybody was cheerful and happy. And then all of a sudden the news came in and started and, and the votes started piling up and it started to be very, very clear that it was going to be the opposite. And to see their tone 
change. All of a sudden, I mean, these people got depressed on the air. I know because I watched. Some of them were in denial. Some of them got angry. Especially the ones that, well, we're not calling it yet. We're not, we're not, we're not call, they're hoping for a miracle. They refused it. it one, what was it? It was it ABC. ABC, I think, was the last to call one of the uh, the major networks. Uh, they refused to call the when it, when it was absolutely the, when the last state to go to for uh, uh, the last state to have their polls closed, Hawaii, which if Clinton won, which she did, wasn't going to make a difference. They they still didn't want to call it. They refused to call the race in 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 for Trump. That's how depressed and in denial they were. I mean, when Obama was winning, oh man, they couldn't they couldn't wait until the California polls closed to be the first ones to to announce that Obama won. But then when they realized it was going to be Trump, man, these people, they they just they got so depressed, so angry. Uh, you could see, you could see. I mean, it's the first time I've ever seen, you know, seasoned veterans of the TV news genre sit there with their heads down, their bottom lips literally poking out, and some of them actually sitting there on camera with their arms folded. I've never seen it before. I mean that that that's how. In, that's how depressed these people were. Because they just knew that they had pulled they had pulled it off once again and pulled the wool over the American people's eyes and got their candidate of choice elected, and it didn't work this time. Same thing with Google and, and, and Facebook. And now, now they're under fire for all the fake news. Oh, that fake news that helped that helped Donald Trump. No, it didn't. They're looking for any excuse except for the re- the real reason that she lost. The American people, one, didn't trust her, thought she was a criminal, thought she should be locked up, and two, they didn't like her policies. But that's something that they can't admit to themselves. Welcome back, folks. It's hour number three here on the Rod Eccles Show. I am, of course, your lovable host, El Rod. And I am, of course, coming to you live once again from the Bunker Eye studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is, live free or die. It is not big government or bust. And I got a question in an email the other day, like, when did I start calling it the Bunker Eye studio? I think I called it the Bunker Eye studio from day one, just about day one, way back in 2009. And for those people who are interested, um... I haven't really, if, if I've changed it all over the years, I think I've become more conservative than I, than I was just a, even a few years ago. But you can actually go back to Blog Talk Radio and look, look you know, do a uh, search for Rod Eccles and find all my old, old shows over there. If you have some time over the holidays uh, to kill... Then and you can even download them. I think I think you can download the episodes over there. I'm not sure. I know Blog Talk has some weird type of uh, policy, but I'm not, I'm not sure how. I, since I'm not broadcasting there anymore, I don't keep track of what uh, keep track of all that stuff. But I do know that the, all my old shows are still over there. A couple years worth, a couple three years worth of of programs are is still available. The one hour, the two hour, and the three-hour programs as I grew the show. So if you want to see what I was saying about Barack Obama back in 2009 and 2010 versus what I'm saying today, you'll find me uncannily consistent. Um, but, um, yeah, it's there if, you, if you'd like to. Now, maybe I should try to... Now that's a lot of work to try to download all those and put them up on, on a separate system. I'm going to have to look into how to do that more automatically. Uh, unless there's a volunteer out there who wants to archive that kind of stuff. That'd be kind of nice. I'm going to need to do an archive. But um, yeah, all that stuff is over there if you want to go take a look at it. But in any case, 
Um, speaking of social media and the, the big guy, Silicon Valley, having a hissy fit and now trying to get back into the good graces of Donald Trump, uh, you should follow me on social media. I put up a lot of good content, as they call it, on social media, and it doesn't mirror. So in other words, you know, Facebook doesn't look like Google+, Plus, which doesn't look like uh, LinkedIn, which then doesn't look like Twitter, which doesn't look like Pinterest and Instagram. It's all different. Now, there are some, some, there's some crossover, honestly, between Facebook and Twitter. That's because Facebook is connected to Twitter. But there's lots of stuff that I say and tweet that does not end up on Facebook. So it is quite different. So it's very easy to find me. You know, to, uh, um, uh, Facebook is the only one where you actually have to write, uh, type in a lot of letters. The Rod Eccles Show, you know, facebook.com slash The Rod Eccles Show. That's on Facebook. Everything else, everywhere else, it's Rod Eccles. You know, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+. Plus. It's all Rod Eccles. I, I don't make it difficult to find me. I don't use some cutesy name. Um, I make it easy to find. And seeing how I don't have to worry about other people with my name, except for, I think he's a dentist out of Chicago. Yes, he's a dentist out of Chicago. A while back, he had an issue. <laughs> I, I booted him off the, off the first three pages of Google search, and it was hard for new patients to Google him and find him because they all came up with me. Now, I didn't do it on purpose. That was, had, I had not, that was all Google. That's how their algorithm works. And he actually had an issue with that and wondered how I could fix it. Yeah, this, this, this dentist from Chicago wondered how I could fix the problem that both of our names were, were Rod Eccles. And I said, well, obviously there's one easy way to fix it. Uh, you got to change your name. <laughs> that's that's exactly what I said to him. Um, and I, we have not conversed since, by the way. Just just saying. I, I'm I'm probably guessing that this dentist is also probably a liberal. I don't know his political uh, leanings or bent, but you know, I think I think his name is Rodney J. Doctor Rodney J. Eccles might be. Yeah, but anyway, same spelling. Yeah, easy to get confused. But he doesn't look like me, and I don't look like him. Actually, I think he's older, so it would be, if anybody looked like, if we look like each other, it would be I look like him, because he's older. But um, we don't look anything alike. In fact, he's white, just so people know. Not Just pointing out the obvious. It has nothing to do with ethnic or racial backgrounds or anything, but if you look at the, his picture and look at my picture... First thing you're going to notice is that he's white and I'm not. Uh, just saying. But, and I'm not a dentist. And I did not want to be a dentist. I do not want to be a dentist. Also, it's a, still a good time to go ahead, it, Christmas shopping, early Christmas shopping, Black Friday is one of the things you can, you can do to, that, that's real inexpensive, but it's a real great gift for that fellow liberal in your family that you want to try to wise up is uh, to get my book, The Conservative Ecclesiastes, over on Amazon.com as a Kindle download. But, um, yeah, so it's not, you know, if you want to find some of those old programs to see how consistent I've been, then they're, they're available for you over on Blog Talk Radio. And, and, and I guess we'll be working on having a full archive system over on rodeckles.net. Got a lot of good stuff, potential stuff that's in the works right now, you know, trying to cross all the T's and dot all the I's uh, that should be happening in the first and within the first quarter of 2017. Exciting stuff coming up. You're going to want to tell your friends that you were here from the beginning. Well, it's not really the beginning. It's seven years later, but um, still the beginning. You know, they say overnight successes. When you actually look into their background, they've been at it for 20 years, but now they're an overnight success. MRC TV. Here's the headline. 1500 per day. Border Patrol opens temporary facility to accommodate border surge. I kid you not. This kind of stuff is really happening 
at the moment. And and it's it's not looking pretty down there. Um, it's not well. I guess you could call it an internment camp because they're 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 interning illegals that they've caught crossing the border, and they say that as many as fifteen hundred a day are crossing. Now, with that said, there's also a report from the Daily Caller that says thousands of immigration green cards have disappeared. We have this massive influx of illegals trying to cross the cross our borders now before Donald Trump closes them. And this is all an attempt in order to try to to try to make his policy a failure because, you know, hey, they've always said, well, you can't deport three million people. And Donald Trump has said, watch me. And they're saying in, in return, oh, yeah, OK, well, we're going to make sure that there's four million. Maybe you can get three, but you can't get four. That's what this is all about, folks. Obama has opened the gates on our southern border. He's opened the floodgates. I don't know how you misplace or lose green cards. Thousands of green cards are missing because U.S. citizenship and and immigration services officials apparently sent them to the wrong address. I, I, how do you send something like that to the wrong address? Is that what we're really to believe? Is that what they're trying to make us believe? Is that, oh, it was just a clerical error. I find it funny that the government, you know, well, police get the wrong address sometimes. But I find it funny that when they want to come after you for money like the IRS, they never seem to get the wrong address. You know, your neighbor doesn't get, get, get a padlock put on their door in their business because you owe the IRS money. IRS never seems to get that wrong. Government never seems to get that wrong. They go after the right people for money. Now, sure, oftentimes they get the amount that you owe them wrong, but they never get the wrong person. They never get the wrong address. So how is it that you got some of these people that get the, constantly get the wrong address? Especially when you're talking national security. We're talking national security here, folks. Green cards. A green card means that you're here legally. Well, if you come across the border illegally and unknown and you get one of these green cards, well, it's the real deal, and you fill it out, well, now you look like you're legal. So even if you're not in a sanctuary city, by the way, I got something for sanctuary cities here, too. Um, If if you're not in a sanctuary city, you're not going to get caught, arrested, and deported because you got a green card. And you got the real deal. It's not, well, it's been forged, but it's not a fake. I wonder how much green cards are worth on the black market. Probably a lot. I mean, do you really think that this is by accident? I'm not buying it, not at all. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 dollars of pill pharmacy prices again get viagra for less than three dollars a pill call 800-595-2614 today and save up to five hundred dollars and get 40 pills for just 99 dollars. healthy man is fast easy and affordable operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now call 800-595-2614 that's 800-595-2614 again 800-595-2614 
We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. So we have all these illegals that are crossing the border, 1,500 a day in, um, in a particular area alone, and green cards are missing. A number of green cards, because they were, quote unquote, sent to the wrong address, wink, wink. Wait, but... There's more. WND.com is reporting. DHS may leave known smuggling route into U.S. unprotected. Agents told by end of month we're not covering that section anymore. Uh, hello? An active smuggling route at the U.S. southern border with Mexico will be largely abandoned by the government at the end of this month, an agent with the U.S. Border Patrol has informed WND. The so-called S-2 route runs along two, a two-lane country road through a remote area. More than 900 illegal Im- immigrants have been apprehended on the route over the past year. For basically uh, the past year, we've been out there covering that route. Now we're told by the end of this month, we're not going to cover it anymore. Nobody's going to be on the road looking for illegals. And actually, this is a story from a month and a half ago. In other words, October 1st, they started not covering this route. And thus we get to this story from MRC TV. 1,500 per day. Border Patrol opens temporary facility to accommodate border surge. And then we find out Thousands of immigration green cards have mysteriously gone missing because some governmental clerk at the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services offices sent them to the wrong address. Do y'all see any correlation... You know, any any connecting the dots there? I hate to use the word, but do y'all see a real conspiracy happening now? This guy spent eight years trying to tra- uh, fundamentally transform this country. This guy spent eight years subverting 
in skirting our laws. Talking about Barack Obama. In as his last hurrah, as punishment, or as they say down south, is punishment for electing Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton, because you know, you know, Hillary Clinton would scratch Barack's back if Barack scratched Hillary's back. You know, they 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 were possibly dual criminals in this stuff. So now you got. Barack, who's on his way out the door, man, two two months. Do you realize in two months we'll have a new president? I, I, don't, I you want to talk about being a kid and not being able to wait for Christmas? Hell, I'm like a kid again. I can't. It's not December 25th that I can't wait for. It's January 20th. You know, when you get to be a certain age, you don't want time to, time to go faster because it just means you get older faster. But <laughs> I want these next two months to go by pretty damn fast, to tell you the truth. Uh, forget, you know, let's, uh, I'm sorry, sorry God, you know, and Son of God, Christ, but let's just skip right over Christmas and head right to uh, January. To, hey, this is the guy that you gave us, right? So let's just get to it already. Because otherwise, this, this guy that's currently in there, and he, he's trying to do some damage before he leaves. The Red Cross responds to nearly 66,000 disasters every year, most of them house fires. Red Cross President and CEO Gail McGovern says you need to develop an evacuation plan and practice it, especially with your children. It takes just two minutes for a home to be engulfed in flames. Practice those drills. We all think our kids know what to do. They don't. We need to teach them. We have started a large campaign where we're going into vulnerable communities and helping install smoke alarms. Already 92 lives were saved. And four of those lives were saved by a five-year-old girl who remembered what we taught them during these fire drills, and she got her family out. We also have a slew of free apps that people can download onto their smartphones. It's what to do in every kind of disaster you can imagine, how to prepare and how to recover. To help support all the Red Cross does and to make a financial donation, go to redcross.org. That's redcross.org. I'm just so happy my father had a chance to see his kids before he passed. I just want to say thank you. When her father fell ill, the American Red Cross was able to help get Veronica's brother home from the Navy to speak to his father one last time. It's thanks to your donations that we can connect military families when they need it most. Please donate today at redcross.org. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly... It's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Every day, the men and women of the United States Marine Corps demonstrate their commitment to defend the American way of life. Since 1775, we have served our nation as a force in readiness. From combat operations to humanitarian assistance in every corner of the world. No matter where the mission takes us today or wherever our country needs us tomorrow, we always remember the land we call home. As Marines, we take a stand for each other, for our nation, for us all, the few, the proud, the Marines.
I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war as they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful. The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. So there you have it. You've got all those wonderful green cards that are missing. You've got all those, one, match this to all those wonderful new illegals crossing the border. And then you realize that there was a story over a month ago referring to how to make this crossing for these illegals even easier because they just decided to stop patrolling a known crossing where they were very successful in picking up over 900 illegals in a year. Now, in the greater scheme of things, you know, 900 people may be a drop in the bucket, but that's 900 people that should not have been here that were caught. And they're walking away from it. Where do they go? However, there was uh, a story back in the summer that talked about the Border Patrol said that they were understaffed. Well, here's the problem with the Border Patrol being understaffed. Stop. Look, Vermont, I have mentioned this time and time again. There is a, a border crossing checkpoint in Vermont. Well, the problem is, you know, Vermont, yeah, Canada, I know, I get it. You know, illegal Canadians coming across the border. The problem is is that the border checkpoint is some 70 miles south of the border. Well, I don't know about you, but that's a, that's a, a big, you, know, you may be on the highway, but that's a big difference, you know, from being right on the border. And here's the, the additional problem. Not only is it 70 miles, yeah, it's on a highway. It's on a major artery running north and south. But here's the problem. There's another major artery that runs north of that checkpoint and doesn't even go past the checkpoint. So all people have to do is know about the checkpoint, which they do. And if they still want to get into Massachusetts, which they do, they just take the other highway, which they do. But we've got an awful lot of resources, meaning human beings, meaning Border Patrol agents, and it's not even manned 100% of the time. But when they do, there's like 20 of them there. Why? When the problem is, it's, it would be like, you know, we, we hear all these, these, these liberals say, well, geez, why don't we, you know, there's a, we have a bigger border with Canada. Why don't we put a fence there? Can you imagine if our government decided to build a fence on our northern border with Canada? Now, we don't have a real issue with illegal crossing and, and smuggling. Sure, there's some, but we don't have a real issue with human smuggling and uh, illegal immigration coming out of Canada. We just don't. 
well, may, may, maybe there there might be some illegal Americans wanting to get into Canada now, but they they can they can they don't have to go illegally. You think Canada will Trudeau will accept some of them with open arms, liberals. But it, but that's not where the problem is. And I'm not saying that you leave the northern border completely unprotected. Well, no. That would be asinine. But you don't put a you don't put a good portion of your resources, human and technological, in an area where you have no problems. You transfer them to the areas where you have a problem. But it seems like our border patrol is getting thinned out along along our southern border. Border agents know this, which is why they back Donald Trump. You know, well, they just want to keep their jobs. Well, so does everybody else in the government. But I think their job is pretty important. I mean, we've just got so much stuff that has gone on. And this is a guy that gets up in front of a microphone, in front of a, uh, in, behind a podium, and, and uh, talks to a bunch of people. Yeah, my, my administration has been the most the scandal-free administration ever. Which is a bold-faced lie because all you got to do is look at Hillary Clinton and the State Department and that's got to be that's got to be at least on par with Watergate. If not worse, at least in Watergate, nobody died. At the minimum under Obama's in Obama, uh, under Obama's administration in the, within the State Department, Hillary Clinton, at least four Americans died. That is not even up for debate or discussion. It's just historical fact. Therefore, and now we know about all the emails, the email scandal, the private server scandal, and we have emails showing that. That President Obama did, in fact, know, even though he said he didn't know, but he did, in fact, know that she was using a different, you know, server and that type of thing. Uh, so as far as him being scandal free. Are you kidding me? He's one of the he's one of the dirtiest presidents we've ever had. Even if he's not directly or even indirectly responsible for for a lot of it. He set the tone he set the environment that allowed that sort of thing to proliferate. Now, we've seen Trump already dismiss somebody. He doesn't care who you are. You know, has anybody seen or talked to Chris Christie since being fired, basically, from Trump's transition team? I haven't seen anybody talk to Christie. I mean, I guess Donald is going to have a, uh, you know, the Donald, the President Donald, is going to have a sit down with him. But he didn't take it lying down. He didn't wait. You know, when Christie was uh, saying he was going to bring in all these retreads from Bush and Clinton and Bush, Trump said, no, we're draining the swamp, you dolt. You're fired. And he brought somebody else in. That was quick and swift. And he didn't say, oh, now, Chris... Now, you know that we're really trying to do something different here. So if you don't mind, I want you to go home and sit in the corner and think about your actions, young man. And then come back tomorrow with a smile on your face and we'll start all over. Okay? Okay. No, that's not Donald Trump. But that is your typical politician. Donald Trump said... Damn it, I told you we're draining the swamp. You're bringing more alligators in. You're fired. That's, that's what people are actually hoping that Donald will, will do more of as his administration takes control. I'm looking forward to it too. Um, although I like the start for every new regulation that, you, that they um, put forth. They got to get rid of two old ones. I like that as a start, but I just think they just need to start going in and slashing regulation. Forget the, forget the two-for-one deal. How about we just get rid of all the regulation that's bad 
Um, and if we have to throw the book away and start over, let's do that. Really. I mean, yeah, he's a, he's a guy that, that could do that too, by the way. Um, and we need to, we need to get rid of people, people who, who mail national security documents, which is a green card is a national security document. People who mail national security documents to the wrong address need to be fired. Not investigated. Well, maybe investigated later, but they don't need to be investigated or put on leave. They just need to be fired. Look, if you do something like that in the private sector, there is no recourse other than firing you. You can sit there and, you know, oh my God, I can't believe I did that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you, you know, maybe you didn't really mean to do that, but you did and you're fired. That's the way it goes. That's the way it should go. But instead, somehow these people in these wonderful government, cushy, plushy government jobs, they make mistake after mistake after mistake. And half the time, they don't even get transferred. They just get reprimanded. We're going to this. Now, this is going to go on your permanent record. What the hell does that mean anyway? Remember, didn't they used to say that this is going to go in your permanent record as if it's going to haunt you for the rest of your life. In most cases, especially if you do something in government or in high school, it doesn't haunt you for the rest of your life. It doesn't even, it doesn't even, it doesn't even bother you to try to get into college. Uh, in fact, college likes to look the other direction half the time. And, oh, speaking of which, here, paper pile again, got it right here. Sometimes... I don't even know how good I am when I bring stuff up like this. I didn't even do do it that way on purpose. It just came out of my mouth that way. Here you are. Hot air. Is uh, Colleges are preparing a legal defense of sanctuary universities for illegal immigrants. In other words, they're, they're preparing for a, a legal defense in case the government comes after them to try to prosecute them. They're, they're trying to, and they're trying to use the Constitution in a way that it was not meant to be used. Uh, which they're really going to, the liberals are going to learn that they're going to get crushed in this one pretty bad. It's just absolutely amazing. Got a late caller in here, 850, you're live on the Rod Eccles Show. What you got? Rod, um, how would you explain gross negligence in government? Um, well, mailing green cards to the wrong address would be one. So that, therefore, in terms of when the Constitution was written, which is what we have is a law. Uh, that's a high crime and a misdemeanor if you're president of the United States. You know, if, if you're a snuffy like you and me, you get stomped on and squashed like a bug. Well, true. I'm, well, obviously, you know, President Obama didn't mail them himself, and there is no evidence that no, he directed he, somebody you know, to do that. that. That's the thing. Uh, right today, th- that's the wiggle room. And well, that's always room, been, that, you know, the that's always been the that, wiggle room. That, that, the, you know, the uh, the Godfathers and the, and the Dons, the Kingpins, they they always have their minions do stuff with by a wink and a nod. So if anything ever happens, it can't really come but back to them. Not any of them have the title of President of the United States, which runs the executive branch of the government, and so therefore you have a renegade executive branch, unless you want to just call it Obama. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I get that, but, you know, we also have to understand that there are literally... Well, they used to have an, an, an ex-exec club in Cape Coral, Florida. And what the ex-execs were was the, the, the boys in, in a certain group in, in the CIA that used to overthrow governments because they exed out the execs the executive branch. Like, you know, Australia. In, in, the, in, in the 1960s, the Australian prime minister disappeared while he was swimming. To this day, no one talks about it, which is a testimony to the people who ran that operation. Although, it's qu- quite possible that some of the folks, you know, didn't live much further past that. And uh, so... <clears throat> Uh, the um, the same people that could propel our uh, intelligence apparatus to do such a thing, 
and work other things, you know, have uh, elevated themselves into this uh, uh, government complex, this military-industrial complex. It's the only thing you can call it. Well, so, yeah, I mean, Barack it... Obama. When you want to talk about the 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 the, uh, the, the dons and the kingpins, well, actually, it, it, it's what Eisenhower called it first off. Now, Eisenhower survived to become president. Patton did not. And, and Skull Beggary is, is 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 older than the United States. Uh, this is castle intrigue is what we have, and that's what the Clintons had in in, in the nineties when they both. Oh yeah, this is this stuff is nothing new. I think a lot of people think that this might be something new. This is this is government power is this type of corruption is time memorial. And and and, and we should see that our our republic has been subverted, and everybody should be mad like the guy on the, that movie. You know, um, you know, throw open the window and yell out the window. I'm as mad as hell. <laughs> and I'm not going to work in it. Yeah, see, that's what we said with a vote. But this marionette, this, that's how you're describing Barack Obama. He's on a cocaine string. You see all those jerky movements and stuff he makes when he's feeling good? He looks just like Glenn Campbell when he had a problem. And, uh, you, know, his, you know, just cruising along, you think he'd fall out of his ass. He's so relaxed. His central nervous system. Gets a good whack every once in a while. He just loves it. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's the kind of people <clears throat> the Republican Party have left stole the 2008 and the 2012 election. And so many people came together on the third time. It wasn't a charm, although they thought it was going to be. And so they're still moving. And there may be some horrendous false flag, which the weapon of choice would be something that they traded into Syria for through Benghazi. And they can release that in the United States, and it doesn't have any markers of the United States because it's foreign. It's a foreign weapon. All of, even, even down to atomic, uh, you know, reactors leave their mark when they manufacture plutonium. You know, you can tell where that came from to a certain point. And, yeah, there is. There, uh, there is uh, actually. I did have something yesterday in the in yesterday's paper pile about some nuclear stockpile stuff. Uh, some of it's oh, still yeah, out there. They, in the nineties, uh, enough plutonium went missing in Japan for fifteen weapons. I can only hope that uh, some really mm, pragmatic people in Japan have armed themselves, and uh, when China is more preoccupied with us, uh, that Japan can do a number on them and, uh, you know, basically act like a North Korea for us, like the North Koreans act for the Chinese. Well, yeah, that's that's that that's specific rim uh, stuff. That that's a whole another mess over there that Trump is going to oh, have to get a hold of. But show there, uh, Rod, and and as we waved to uh, Putin as he rolled into Crimea with intermediate missiles, they can close the Strait of Sicily. You're not going to get anything to Israel by ship that way. Well, that's the reason that's why Crimea. they move there, and but... they can hit Israel too with an intermediate range missile. And they they probably put them in there, you know. So I mean, the, the, the ramifications of this idiot, this bathhouse boy from Chicago, who prances around, stoned out of his gourd, with his lovely wife and his family up there, and the mother-in-law and the father-in-law all on a pension. It's just so Chicago, but it's the Chicago way, my friend. Uh, I am really pressed for it right now. I got to go and take this last break, but it's always good to talk to you. Thank you for your insight. Thank you, sir. Talk to you again soon. Uh, hold yes, on, sir. folks. We'll be right back, and I'll wrap it up. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on the Rod Echo Show.
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15. $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800 595 2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595 2614 to take your call now. Call 800 595 2614. That's 800 595 2614. Again, 800 595 2614. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide, plus what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement on Amazon.com. This holiday season, help soldiers for stockings improve the morale and welfare of members of our armed forces deployed overseas. Now through November 20th, there is so much work to be done, and you can help in many ways. Download the stocking pattern from stockingsforsoldiers.org and start sewing today. Volunteer to help decorate and assemble stockings. Donate Christmas candies, snacks, nuts, chips, drink mixes, DVDs, books, magazines, lip balm, toiletries, and other items needed to fill the stockings. Or help make packets of snowman soup, hot chocolate, to send along with the stockings. For more information, patterns, and a list of items needed, visit stockingsforsoldiers.org. This holiday season, help send our troops a touch of home. For many, it's all they will receive. All stockings need to be completed by November 20th. So get started today at stockingsforsoldiers.org. That's stockingsforsoldiers.org. Stockings for Soldiers. Sending stockings filled with joy to our soldiers in harm's way for the ninth consecutive year. You know, one of the, uh, the, the things about this college thing out there in California, uh, here it is, Maria Blanco, Executive Director of the Undocumented Student Legal Services Center, said that student petitions have focused on three common requests, that universities not share students' personal information, including address and immigration status, with U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, without a subpoena. That they prevent law enforcement agencies from conducting raids on campus without a warrant. And that the campus police officers decline to take on the responsibility of enforcing immigration law. And she's saying that uh, privacy laws and the Fourth Amendment rights against unreasonable search and seizure should enable schools to accommodate all three requests. Here's the problem with that, though. You see, police agencies, local and federal, have something that's called probable cause. And therefore, they're not going to need a subpoena or a warrant in order to effect search and seizure due to probable cause. So if you've got a person who you know is an illegal, you've got probable cause to approach them and to get gather information without a warrant while investigating the crime as the crime is happening. You're right. You know You don't need a warrant. If you go into a murder scene, you don't need a warrant, do you? No, you're able to investigate because a crime has been committed. And you're looking for evidence to try to solve the crime. So you find an illegal immigrant. Now you're going to go looking for evidence as to how that person got there. See, these liberals, they they don't get fully get the whole thing. And if you've got somebody who's smart on the other side... Who is more than willing to go to bat to prosecute? But that that's not going to fly, and it's going it's to be hard. They're going to be hard pressed to try to get a judge to go along with them. But 
just so you know, you get coll- you got colleges now that are trying to think of ways to gear up to thwart Donald Trump in taking on um, illegal immigration. By the way, if you want to be a sanctuary university, I guess that means you should give up all your any and all government money as well. That could be research grants, fellowship grants, uh, money for, for kids to go there, grants and, and loans. Nope, can't have it anymore. Uh, you're going to act that way. Look at all the money they're going to lose. Hit them in the pocket pocketbook too. That's the only thing that these people are going to understand is when you start hitting them in the pocketbook and say, look, you got to follow the law like everybody else does. You're not special. The people that you think you're protecting are not special. Um, it's, it, it, if, they're, if anything, the people that are special are the actual citizens of this country and those who legally became citizens, not the illegals. Well, that sound in the background means that we're out of time for today. Sadly, folks, three hours have just flown by. Glad that you are here. Hope you'll be back tomorrow morning. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, I'm Rod Eccles. This has been the Rod Eccles Show. Thanks for listening. I'm out. <laughs>